Yeah. Hello, I'm glad to introduce you the speakers of our joint presentation with our software partner, Franz Valor, Lisa Stefan and the Yeti, and John Maskolomer. Stefan Andrietti is the marketing director of Franz Valor. He has a diploma in mechanical engineering and he holds a master of science degree in materials science and materials processing from the School of Mines at Paris Tech. Stefan has spent over 25 years working at Franz Valor. He operated as technical support manager until 2011. With a good expertise in Trans Valor software portfolio, manufacturing processes and market intelligence, he then decided to move from a technical position to new responsibilities in 2015, and he is now marketing and communication director at Transvalor. John Maskolomer works as an application engineer at Data Advance. John has studied aerospace engineering at the Polytechnical University of Catalonia. He obtained a PhD in multidisciplinary optimization at Onrail Spiro. And John joined Data Advance in 2020 as an application engineer. I would like to remind you that we have a, a virtual booth of Transvalor today, and you can chat with the representatives of the company after this presentation. Uh, you can leave the questions in the Q&A panel on the, in the top right corner, and the speakers will answer them at the end of the presentation. On that, I end my introduction, and I pass the ball to Stefan. Okay. Thank you, Natalia, for this very uh, kind introduction. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stefan Andrietti, uh, and as Natalia mentioned, I'm Marketing Director at Transvalor. It is my pleasure. Uh, to welcome you on this presentation dedicated to Forge software integration with uh, P7 and its application to the hot rolling process. Here is our agenda. So we will start with a brief introduction uh, about the industrial context and give a few words about Forge software. Then we will describe uh, the use case and the way integration has been implemented uh, between the two software and we will comment the main optimization results. Finally, uh, lead to our conclusions and perspectives. So to start with, let me uh, briefly highlight a few key figures uh, as a matter of context. The, uh, the steel industry, despite the pressure coming from light metals technologies, keeps progressing very well. The total steel production uh, has raised by 15% uh, uh, since 2015, reaching last year almost 1,900 million uh, of tons. China is definitely leading this market with more than 50% of the annual production, followed by other Asian countries and the, uh, and the US. Therefore, uh, European companies are putting lots of efforts to reinforce their competitiveness and to produce steel grades of very high quality. So this is where process simulation takes place to ease and accelerate innovation. Transfeller is a French company uh, founded more than 30 years ago. Uh, we are based in Sophia Antipolis, which is a technology park located in south of France. We developed and commercialized simulation software dedicated to process modeling for the manufacturing industry. <clears throat> we offer a large panel of solutions and we will focus in this presentation upon Forge software, which is devoted to metal forming. So the software is used for various uh, kinds of applications, starting from the most common closed die and open die forging. As you can see, um, every, steps, uh, every step of the deformation process can be simulated and compared to the actual workpiece. The benefits for forging designers and manufacturing engineers are multiple. Being able to make first time right designs, increase uh, process reliability, boost innovation, there's almost uh, no limit to imagination, keep know-how uh, inside the company and obviously predict uh, product properties. So Forge software can be used as well uh, for uh, other metal forming processes, such as hot rolling. This is the purpose of our presentation. So simulation is used to address hot rolling of flat products. This is what you can see 
on this top animation, so the to the top right, where it is important to master elongation and deformation rate together with uh, properties like inner porosities. And concerning uh, for long product rolling, the challenges can be related to the process stability and simulation can help to avoid defects such as twisting or side uh, wrinkles. So uh, let's move now to our problem statement and the uh, use case description. It is important to recall that uh, preliminary uh, integration work has been uh, conducted uh, with the two software. Therefore, uh, inverse analysis has been performed in order to identify uh, friction or heat transfer coefficients by means of design space exploration and surrogate modeling. Uh, other uh, fields of, optimi of optimization are in preparation, especially with uh, respect to geometrical optimization uh, in link with common CAD software in order to obtain preforms or tools used in the forging, uh, in the forging area. So our use case has been uh, prepared in close collaboration with ACM, which is the research center from the Italian steelmaker ABS. ACM aims at providing technological guidance to master the manufacturing processes and improve steel product quality. So they also have extensive competencies to work on metallurgical aspects and control final product properties. So as mentioned before, Forge is able to simulate hot rolling. Simulations can be conducted uh, using two different numerical methods, depending on the objectives pursued. Uh, the incremental approach is well adapted to see local defects uh, at the entrance or on the edges, but it requires a full modding of the uh, entire geometry all through the rolling process uh, passes. So consequently, computation time can be quite large. Alternatively, uh, the steady state approach, which is uh, represented uh, at the bottom of the, of the slide, the steady state approach is much faster as it aims at representing the shape of the product only once the process is stabilized. So in the context of our use case, all simulations have been performed using the steady state approach. So now this picture is showing the graphical environment in Forge software. So the use case consists in a three passes rolling process where a bar of a square section, uh, so-called a bloom, is rolled progressively. Each roll has been designed in the CAD system and then its geometry has been directly imported into Forge. Please note that the intermediate cooling stage uh, between two rolling passes uh, is also taken into account as the temperature obviously varies during this duration and may impact the metal deformation. So the rolling and intermediate cooling stages are all chained together, such as the software is able to compute the complete process chain in one single run. This is what is symbolized uh, right uh, here at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. And so now I'm pleased to hand over to my partner, Joanne, who will continue this presentation and get into more details. Okay, so thank you, Stefan, for the first part of the presentation and Natalia for the introduction. So this is Joan uh, from uh, that advance. So now I will share the second part of the screen. Okay. Okay, so as Stefan was saying, um, we'll start working with this with this uh, Forge project. So uh, we will work on the basis of the of the project file um, and and folder with the transvalor architecture of the of the project file. So here we have available all the material data, which will determine the finite element be behavior and the thermal uh, characteristics. Then uh, within the Forge project, we will define the, all the data which is related to the rolls, so their rotating speed, their temperature, and also uh, the parameters that are related to the actual manufacturing process. So the initial temperature of the billet, uh, the transfer coefficient, the heat transfer coefficient between the billet 
and uh, the tools, as well as the friction between the billet and the tools. So we have these three passes. So let's say that these, um, I mean, the shape of the billet at each stage is transferred to the next step uh, so that all these properties are transferred uh, to the following ones. And but we must say that this process is completely dealt automatically by Forge. Okay, so the actual formulation of the problem. So uh, we recall that we have this forging, rolling forging process. Um, we have these three stages, and also we have uh, two intermediate cooling times between steps. They are completely automatically handled by Forge. We will see what are the consequences of that when we will implement this problem using P7. And uh, so there are phys several physics involved. Uh, for the rolling steps, we have nonlinear uh, finite element mechanics, as well as thermal analysis for the transient thermal analysis for the cooling steps. And we are talking about heavy simulation times because even with a reduced model with a coarse mesh, the times are around three hours, three hours and a half to give an order of magnitude. So to optimize, so what do we actually want to optimize? So we want to optimize the manufacturing quality of the billet. So we will take a look at the criterion which evaluates the damage produced during uh, all the steps so its accumulative damage. And for that, we will control. So the cooling that affects the die temperature, the friction between the parts, the rotation speed of the die, and uh, also the initial temperature of the billet. So what's actually our objective uh, function for this problem? So as we said, we want to minimize the manufacturing damage. And for that, the criterion which is used by uh, ACM is uh, what is known as the latham cockroft normalized criterion, which is a criterion which takes into account both the, the cumulative the uh, plastic deformation and the equivalent stress. So that's a scalar field which can be computed at any point of the billet. And in this case, uh, we will compute it, I mean, we will extract it at the edge of the billet as we see here. We only see one quarter of the model because we had two planes of symmetry. So this problem can be solved using only uh, one quarter of the model. We don't show the, the actual values of the reference point because that's proprietary to, to ACM, but we can show, for example, the ranges of variation around the reference temperature, which are uh, quite high here of the order of 100 degrees uh, delta temperature around the, the reference point. We also make vary the reference uh, friction coefficient. For the rotating speed, we go almost, not all the way, but almost half of the reference speed and almost 40% uh, above. And we can show the, the ranges of the initial temperature of the billet because uh, they are considered uh, very wide. So we cover all the range of possible operational parameters. So now I will actually describe how we implemented this problem under P7. And uh, the optimization formulation and algorithm that we chose. But first, we have to accomplish the automation step. Because, for example, for this uh, extraction of the billet uh, results, it was opera an operation that was done manually, but now we have to automatize all the process. So, for each design point, we need to update all the input files of the Forge solver with the updated parameters. So for that, we use the P7 text block. Uh, one particular thing about this type of analysis, classically when using the, this type of solvers, we edit one main uh, text file, which goes as an argument of the program block. But in this case, since it's a complex simulation, I mean, each simulation comprises um, many physical simulation steps, we need to create different text files for every different simulation. But then we don't have to run as many program blocks as physical simulations because just using the Forge uh, functionality, the automatic 
sequence with a single call of a batch file within the, the program block, we can execute all the chain, uh, all the computational chain. So regarding the outputs, uh, we have just seen the inputs. Now, as we were saying, this is a process that typically the extraction of this, what it's called the length plot, because it's the, the evaluation of a scalar along uh, a path. This is typically done manually. And of course, it's possible to do that manually in Forge. There's a dedicated functionality. But the challenge in this, in this uh, particular problem was to do that in an automated way. And the challenge is that these nonlinear physical analyses involve remeshing steps, meaning that neither the, the identification numbers along the path are constant. So we need a way to identify them. And for that, we, we use the Python block to, to create a script that extracts all the mesh, extracts the nodes, and then is able to get this information using a post-processing tool embedded with, with Forge, which is the GLB. So uh, regarding the actual optimization workflow, now we have all the unitary uh, run assembled. So we can move to actual optimization before actually optimizing, we started with an initial DOE that enables to ensure that the workflow works correctly, that the model works, the physical model works correctly within this design space, and also to perform eventual sensitivity analysis in case we observe that a certain variable doesn't have an influence or uh, we want to change the, the objective function because we find uh, a more meaningful one. But we can reuse all this budget with the as an initial sample we can use it for the subsequent sbo so surrogate based optimization step so now i can actually show you because i'm short in time the optimization results so if we plot the history of this maximum of the uh, left and craft criterion we can see so we observe the first random looking exploratory phase that's normal because we chose the, the LHS uh, technique to explore the, the design space and then we plug this as an initial sample so we can actually see how the SBO focus on the lowest values of the objective function and uh, we have to recall that we have two different types of nonlinearities both linked to the physics and the, the objective function, which is the maximum of the of distribution. So we can confirm the quality. So uh, somewhere after 80 iterations, there's already a significant improvement. So that's the refined computation of the damage criterion. So we see that we have all this zone, which is at the maximum level. When looking with the optimized point, we see that it can reduce the, the damage on this on here, significantly reducing this value, with thus improving the, the production quality. So now we can extract <clears throat> some conclusions. So we have seen how to automate uh, a complete uh, industrial-like forge process in P7. So now the, the forging experts can focus on the physics of the problem and automate the task. Also, we uh, this leads to the possibility with the DOE of creating surrogate models and exporting them, not necessarily by using Forge or P7. And we also have seen that using a, a tight budget, for example, like in the real world with um, constraints from the production line, that we, let's say, within the time frame of a week, we can provide significant improvement on the, on the quality. So for that, we had the collaboration of Benjamin Herzer from uh, ACM which identified these as, a, as an enabler that can, let's say within this time frame of a week, provide significant improvements uh, in terms of quality production. And as Stefan recalled, uh, the following steps would be to consider the geometry optimization uh, for the roles. So um, yes, uh, I used a little bit more time than scheduled, but now I can use this time for questions. So thanks for your attention. Whoops.
sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thank you, Stefan okay. and, uh, and, and Joanne for, for this, uh, this presentation. We indeed uh, have a question here. Um, you mentioned a coarse mesh. Uh, in such nonlinear yes. processes, uh, mesh coarsening can lead to a longer simulation time due to worse convergence. So have you made any parametric study involving an element size and its influence on simulation time and its accuracy? No, no, I mean, indeed it has an influence, but in the context of this study, I mean, the, the objective was to get um, like a trend uh, of the results, but not that there's no conversion study performed on the, on the mesh size. Yeah, talking about the mesh size, by the way, I think the question about uh, model size again is uh, is key here uh, in such FEA related um, uh, workflow. Uh, each time we we are in a, in such situation where we have to drive uh, simulation software, so finite element software, CFD, forging, uh, acoustic, uh, whatever. Uh, these are all time-consuming uh, software, and the uh, uh, the unit simulation time can be uh, can it can be an obstacle, of course, for multi-run study and statistical analysis. Um, so um, uh, maybe you can comment on the usage of uh, SBO here, again, yeah. and and, uh, and how is important uh, to 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 get such such algorithm yeah. uh, in an optimization strategy. Yeah, just to clarify on these, uh, because I mentioned the coarse mesh and fine mesh later, it's true that everything that was used with the DOE and SBO was using uh, the coarse mesh. So precisely for the, to use reasonable computation times for, let's say, a more or less uh, massive DOE. But then, for example, it was a one-way uh, check. So we took the best result using the coarse mesh and then checked using the physically meaningful uh, refined mesh. So um, yeah, that was to, to, to get reasonable optimization times using SBO, which allows us to do a global, because I recall this, the, the, the design bounds were pretty high. So to get a, re a reasonable answer, sorry, an answer with a reasonable time using SBO. Um, uh, and maybe if I can just ask a very, very uh, quick additional comment, I would probably say that with, with Forge, you, you mentioned that coarse mesh could be eventually related to, uh, let's say, poor convergency. Uh, in the case of Forge software, it's more the quality of the elements which uh, uh, will affect the, uh, the convergency. And I'm pretty much convinced that with the coarse mesh, obviously that will impact the accuracy of the results, uh, but not necessarily the convergency. So. Uh, this is where we could uh, get to something even more precise, but that should not affect convergency. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, okay, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Joan. Uh, we are a little bit late on schedule and the other session has already started. So um, I encourage all the participants and attendees to, uh, to switch to the next, uh, to the next session. Uh, we have seen here the great, uh, the power of combining uh, our software solutions um, and I hope uh, it has raised interest. So the next session is about uh, airfoil trailing edge optimization for noise reduction. Um, so again, it has already started. So please, uh, please switch uh, if you are interested and see you, see you there. Uh, for now, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, speak to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.